Hey there! You are about to listen to an outstanding episode of Terminally Online, the show where we're joined by Crooked hosts and staffers to share the things we've seen on the internet that made us realize we need to go outside and touch some grass. Some have called Terminally Online the loosest show at Crooked, and they're right! It's chaos! Uh, we have so much fun making it every week, and we hope you'll love it too. Uh, normally, you can only access the show by joining Friends of the Pod, which is Crooked's new subscription community that offers bonus content like Terminally Online, as well as an active community on Discord, uh, where you can yell about the news with us and fellow listeners, see what's going on behind the scenes at Crooked, and more. Plus, joining the Best Friends level is the best way to get involved in our progressive mission. A monthly donation goes straight to Vote Save America, powering the work of grassroots organizers in all 50 states. If you like this episode, or hate it, but think the rest of this sounds cool, uh, head to crooked.com slash friends to learn more and subscribe now. Finally... When we launched Friends of the Pod, a lot of you asked when we would release ad-free episodes. Well, guess what? They're coming. We will be rolling that out soon, so go subscribe and stay tuned. Terminally Online, episode 16. Mark? Welcome to Terminally Online, the Crooked Subscription Show. I'm Elijah Cohn. I'm John Favreau. I'm Dan Pfeiffer. And I'm Priyanka Arabindi. I co-host What A Day. Thank you all for having me here today. This is so exciting. Thanks for great joining to have you, us. Priyanka. It's yeah, it's great to hang. Yeah, yeah, I know. Been overdue. This is a chance for us to commiserate about being way too online as we make the shows here at Crooked Media and cover the news. Let's just kick things off right away with some audience Q&As. Dan and John, Jared wants to know. What is the most frustrating narrative you had to deal with when you were in the White House? Oh, what a question. It's a good one. Dan? That if Barack Obama played more golf with racist Republicans, more would get done. More golf? Is a real one? More, if he played more, more everything. golf. More, more dinners. If he, if he had a bourbon with Mitch McConnell. If he... Went to a tanning salon with John Boehner. Any one of those things would have made the progress. <laughs> I yeah, this is related to that one, but just the whole idea that Obama was too aloof, too aloof. It's like I I, I don't know a more personable, charismatic politician in our lifetimes than the guy who was too aloof. And the uh, the argument for why he was too aloof is because he didn't like the typical Washington bullshit that you do when you are a president or politician in Washington, which is like go to cocktail parties and schmooze and all this other stuff. That was, that was evidence that he was too aloof when in reality, he just thought it was fucking stupid. Too aloof to go to cafe Milano with several ambassadors. Right, exactly. And some exactly. Exactly. We have a follow up to that question. Ooh. Do you have a favorite political or media narrative that's happening right now? Just one that you particularly enjoy. Like legitimately enjoy or hate watch? For me, I just Ron DeSantis is being unlikable and it being like a feedback cycle of unlikableness and then another story about it is something I particularly enjoy. Uh, I'm enjoying like Donald Trump just continually uh, incriminating himself just in public, just coming up with new excuses that will probably only be used against him at trial. I think that's kind of fun. Yeah, I think I'm probably with Elijah that I very much enjoy just the Ron DeSantis clowning himself every time he goes up there. It's just, it's it's pretty perfect. Oh, I also genuinely enjoy Chris Christie kicking the shit out of Donald Trump. Oh, just get back on the Lincoln, Lincoln Project YouTube page <laughs> over there. Yes, yeah, no, I enjoy it because I think he's a hero who should be that president. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, you like yeah. Donald Trump. You want to defend Donald Trump. I understand that. You don't want him to get a lot of criticism. <laughs> so uh, that's fine. But I, I think that people should, should, uh, should criticize him. I was served a Chris Christie TikTok, like not from an official Chris Christie account, but like something trying to make him like doing this look cool. And I was like, wow. what have I done on the Internet that they think... I need this content. <laughs> Made me question a lot of things, but... Priyaka, that is the best evidence yet that the Chinese government is in control of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there with all the other um, outfits of the day that I'm yes. normally served. <laughs> all right, that'll wrap up our audience Q&As for the week. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in to the Terminally Online segment here. Dan, when did you realize that you were Terminally Online this week? I think it was... 
yesterday, I guess. Yeah, it was probably yesterday. I, unlike John, I really still use my phone and I'm very proud of it. And I was scrolling through Twitter uh, and I stumbled on somehow, I'm not even sure how I found it, but it was a old Ron DeSantis tweet from 2015. Wow. Already. In honor of Casey DeSantis's birthday, which was also this week because he was doing a bunch of really cheesy, terrible promoted tweet fundraising ads on Twitter for uh, his wife's birthday. Because if you really – there was even one that was something like Casey's birthday has only has six more hours left and we have not yet hit our petition oh, goal. God. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> which is a sign of true love is hitting your petition goal. Um, <laughs> and I stumbled on this picture. Oh, yes. Please describe the picture for people listening. It is a picture of Ron DeSantis and Casey DeSantis in front of a green screen beach, it appears. Yep, definitely green screen. He is wearing an ill-fitting short sleeve blue button down that makes him look a little bit like Detective Sipowitz in NYPD Blue. And the (laughs) text on this footage says, Casey DeSantis, colon, a man of integrity and honor. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it does. It it does look like they are modeling clothes for TJ Maxx. Like I think I, it's very. It's just they look it's like bad. it's it's really it's wild. Somehow they allowed there to be printed on this photo, Casey DeSantis, a man of integrity and honor. <laughs> now, in defense of the 2015 era Ron DeSantis social team above this in the tweet was a quote from Casey DeSantis calling Ron DeSantis a man of integrity of honor, but that does not translate to the picture, which seems to imply that Casey DeSantis is a man of integrity and honor. Forget the picture for a second. Ron DeSantis just tweeting a picture of tweeting a quote that was an endorsement from his own wife about him is fucking weird. It yep. is. Like, I'm just going to like, a, gonna, like tweet, uh, tweet a quote from Emily. Uh, uh, Emily, you know, John Favreau is the best. I love John. He's great. He's so smart. My wife. It's very, um, <laughs> it's very. No, Chris she Pratt. would, she would she, never say that publicly. I know. That's why I would have to make it up and tweet it. <laughs> that's right. It reminds me of Chris Pratt and when his wife had to be like, you know, when everyone was like saying Chris Pratt was the worst of all the Hollywood Chris's and his wife had to be like, he's this great guy, and it was like. Why would you ever think that this was the appropriate response? That is what it made me think of. I also saw that photo with zero context and was like, I'm perplexed because Casey DeSantis, to my knowledge, is not a man. But um, I, I, too, was not, once again, not inspired to do any further research. I was like, no, I'm leaving this here. They obviously did this at a photo sh- studio with a green screen. Like, what was the alt- like? What was the backup choice? Was it the two of them in old timey Western clothes in a black and white photo? Like, what? Like, what was going to happen no, here? It was. The, it was that or fucking Cinderella's castle. At, oh, uh, at option. Disney. That was they it. Did get married at Disney, w- where they got married. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think of the DeSantis's the DeSantis campaign strategy to just be like you know who people don't hate is Ron's wife. You know, you hate him, but what about his wife? Is I mean, that a winning strategy? I don't know if it's a winning strategy. It's probably a better strategy than uh, using him all the time. Like, every once in a while when you have a candidate who is who is not connecting with voters the way you want, what you do is you go out and get friends from their life and send them out to knock on doors. John Kerry famous, very famously had a lot of his Vietnam vet friends who would go door to door in Iowa and New Hampshire, et cetera. But what do you do... If the candidate has no friends, you, you make him a wife guy. You got the wife. <laughs> Ron DeSantis, famous wife guy. <laughs> that was brutal. Uh, I think the, you know, going from the fundraising in present day back to, to 2015 puts you in at least the hospital out of, out of four for how long. Yeah, I would say that. Can I just I, say one thing that I've been wanting to say for a long time about Ron DeSantis' Disney wedding? Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh boy. So, yeah. So I was at Disneyland with my family for my son Jack's second birthday, and we were staying at a, ho- at a hotel, and there was a Disney wedding taking place on the property. So we okay. watched from the balcony, and what we saw was the bride arrive in a giant horse-drawn Cinderella's carriage. 
So what I need to know... Is there a picture it, of Casey DeSantis? And they left. And then the bride and groom left in said Cinderella carriage. Wow, we need it. It would have uh, sort of double the impact, right, if we get this picture. Because on one hand, most of America will think they look like buffoons. And they will be <laughs> correct. Uh, but the people who are with Ron DeSantis, who know that he has taken on the woke scolds at Disney, they will not be happy to see pictures of Ron DeSantis and Casey DeSantis having a Disney wedding. It's the ultimate lose-lose. Yes. America will accept hypocrisy, and they will accept buffoonery from their politicians. They will not accept both. Not both. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Wow. That's for next week. I hope someone can come back with that photo. I feel Mm. like if anyone could, it would be one of you two. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, these are Trump's tax returns. This is the 2024 version of it. Uh, <laughs> do we agree that Dan is uh, a four here? Do we want to put him all the way at terminal? I'd say like three. Three. Yeah, I think that's a three. I think that's a three. Okay, just go to the doctor. John, what was the moment you realized that you were too online this week? A couple days ago, someone at Crooked, I can't remember who, posted a video in the Slack uh, from Twitter where uh, Roseanne Barr says that Donald Trump was the first woman president. There's no explanation for why. There's no context you're missing there. She just said that. So later on, I went back to look for the clip and uh, found out, first of all, that it was actually an old clip from 2020. But then, then I noticed that two of Twitter's top trending topics were Roseanne and Holocaust. Anytime Holocaust is a trending topic on Twitter, It's not good. It's not good. And that's when I discovered that a bunch of uh, popular resistance accounts, your John Coopers, your Krasensteins, um, had tweeted a clip of Roseanne's recent appearance on uh, comedian Theo Vaughn's podcast, where she said the following. Here's the direct quote. This was the quote from the clip. Nobody died in the Holocaust. That's the truth. It should happen. Six million Jews should die right now because they cause all the problems in the world, is what Roseanne said on this podcast. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, these comments uh, caused quite a bit of uh, caused a stir. <laughs> they were widely condemned. Uh, you know, the Holocaust Museum Twitter account had to put out a statement. Uh, Anti Defamation League put out a statement. But then, Roseanne's son. And Theo Vaughn, again, this comedian who's the host of the podcast she went on, said that it's obvious Roseanne was being sarcastic and that the clip was taken completely out of context. So Vaughn tweeted a longer version of the clip. Here it is. And the truth is that Biden got 81 million votes by winning 36 counties. And that is just incredible. It really, really is. And, um, that of these 81 million supporters who gave him more more votes than any president has ever gotten before, he came with a mandate from these 81 million voters. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just glad that they were very careful to make sure that nobody could um, detract from that proven truth. You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? Like that nobody... That they mandated that that was the truth and that nobody could say, well, what about no? Oh, it was made a mandate. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So the government made it a mandate? Yeah, because, you know, YouTube did and so did uh, all the social... Oh, so you can't speak, you can't even speak on that in those platforms. No, you can't say, you know... That it wasn't. You can't say that, like, you know, the there election was, election. was rigged. Or, yeah, right. that's all a lie. The election was not rigged. 36 counties can give you 81 million votes. Right. That's a fact. So it wasn't rigged? Of course not. Yeah. 36 counties have 81 (laughs) million people in them. See? That's the truth. And don't you dare say anything against it or you'll be off YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and all the other ones because we have, you know, there's such a thing as the truth and facts and we have to stick to it. And, um, you know. It's scary. And that is the truth. And nobody died in the Holocaust either. No. That's the truth. Yeah. It should happen. 
six million Jews should die right now because they cause all the problems in the world, but it never <laughs> happened. But it never happened. Yeah. Mandated. Well, you're, because you're part Jewish, right? Part of your family's Jewish? I'm all Jewish. You're all Jewish. 100%. With, and a lot of Hollywood is Jewish, yeah? It's like a, it's like a lot of Hollywood is a Jewish business, really. Well, they started Hollywood. Yeah. Right. But so was it weird Just that- like rap. Black people started rap. Yeah. So I wouldn't go over there and try to get in rap and go, all these black people, you know, go on Saturday Night Live like Dave Chappelle. Uh, I'm just saying a lot of black people are in control of rap. Right. Hello. Well, you went there. You yeah. try to get in show business. Of course it's Jewish. But, you know, and people should be glad that it's Jewish, too, because if Jews were not controlling Hollywood, all you'd have was fucking fishing shows. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my! God. I wish you. I wish people listening could see our faces the whole time that clip was playing. I just want to ask you guys: uh, Do you think the context helped or hurt her case? <laughs> I think it definitely changed my Pulitzer vote for Theo Vaughn, who doesn't seem to be really good at follow-up questions. Unreal. I'm more confused. I'm more confused than ever with that context. I don't think. I don't right? think I want any more context ever well, again. <laughs> well, so I, of course, I was. This is when I was terminally online. I, I, I like went deep into all the tweets about this, and there's a lot of stories about this, a lot of headlines about this, not just in the United States, but all over the world, as you can imagine, many headlines in Israel about this. Um, so, <laughs> here's the thing: if you, if, if we're going to believe her that she was just being sarcastic about the Holocaust, which is again something you always want to be sarcastic about. You always want to tell a lot of jokes about the Holocaust. That usually is a, a good thing. Um, then she was also being sarcastic, of course, about the fact that Joe Biden did win the election and uh, and was just spouting a bunch of nonsense about Joe Biden and the election, which of course she was. He did not win 36 counties. He won many more counties than that. Um, and also, you don't get 81 million people out of 36 counties, you fucking idiot. The 81 million people is all of the people all across the country. <laughs> Not just the, you don't just get the votes of the people in the counties you win in, you dumb fuck. <laughs> During this interview, Roseanne Barr is both smoking a cigarette <laughs> yes. and yes. drinking some substance out of a pink toddler sippy cup. Yes, <laughs> what Literally. was that? What yeah. was that? I was very distracted by that throughout the whole experience. The beginning, it was kind of giving Elon Musk on Joe Rogan. Like yeah. I was like, "What? What's happening here?" And then very quickly, it becomes a sippy cup. It's all very confusing. And then she goes from the the from the election denial to the Holocaust uh, joke and air quotes here, and then just seamlessly goes into. Uh, Jews control Hollywood, um, something about fishing movies, uh, and then uh, black people and hip hop. Yeah. I mean, it was wild. So I, I saw this uh, <laughs> organically as well. I saw both the, wow. the Roseanne Barr video where she says Donald Trump was the first woman president. I went down that same wormhole and then ended up with this video. And I was like, okay, as a Jewish person, I'm very offended by this. I went and watched and was like, okay, I guess I can see how she's joking. I hadn't seen like this whole clip though. And just like this, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just so much racism, anti-Semitism, just like conspiracy theories. And it's, it, I, no, it, I don't think releasing the full thing <laughs> helps there. And I'll tell you, I, I, you know, we tried to cut it down here for the show, even though it was quite long still. I watched way too much of that whole interview because I couldn't find, I was waiting, for, I was trying to find the part because I didn't see the Theo Vaughn clip of the, of the whole context. First, I was just looking at the full interview, and I was trying to find the right part of it. There's a lot of other crazy shit in there, let me tell you. That is a, and it was a big waste of my time. <laughs> but, yeah. I, you know, I do it all for this show. So, five. Did you do it for, for the show because you knew you had to have something here, or you were in the middle of going down the rabbit hole and realized it could also be used for this show? I would say as soon as I went from um, the... Trump is the first woman president clip to first seeing her talk about the Holocaust. Um, I was like, oh, that could be a terminally online thing. But then I started doing my research because I do my own research, of course. That's what you're supposed <laughs> to do. As you do, Kyrie Irving, yes. <laughs> and then I went down, then I really went down the rabbit hole to just try to figure out, like, is it a joke? Is it not a joke? What's going on? And so that's when I had to watch the whole thing. I agree with the ranking on you, which is not great. But I would say on one hand, I'm a zero because I didn't even see this in Slack. 
So I missed yeah, the whole same. thing. I am Bulls, living yo. in blissful ignorance of yep. Roseanne Barr's comments, this Theo Fawn person, any of that. <laughs> I'm also a five because I knew that in 2020, Roseanne Barr said that Donald Trump was the first woman president. Oh, you did know that. Okay. I did know that. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, Are John, definitely reading- terminal. I'm terminal? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, Am I supposed to be rating myself for that? Because I also am kind of in Dan's camp. Like, this did not even cross my radar. And if it had, I would not. I would have been the opposite of inspired to go do my own research. I would have been like, I don't want to touch that with a 15-foot pole. Fully the other direction. But, yeah, I'm sorry, John. That uh, There's no coming back from that. Nice. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one does fit on just something you guys talk about on Pod Save America all the time. It's just polarization is a real thing. There are a lot of Theo Vaughn is an incredibly popular comedian. I see his clips pop up on my algorithm every now and then. And there's a lot of people who are just sitting there nodding along, just being like, yep, mm hmm, <laughs> preach it. <laughs> yeah, I'd never heard of him before this. You yeah. see him on. TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, where do you where do you encounter Mr. Vaughn? Uh, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok. And it it no. always has Priyanka, you know, it always yeah, has seen, like, like a video game under it. Yes, yes. That's how they keep you watching like the things that can become a little boring or like start to not make sense is they like have half and half of a screen and and it's like whatever, um Candy Crush not Candy Crush, it's like what Temple Run, like some kind of video yeah, game yeah. like that. Subway where Surfer. You're just like what yes, exactly. It's very weird. So I feel like we're all terminal for this. We're all just revealing <laughs> we're very terminal for this. So thanks for bringing out the worst of us, John. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Priyanka, when were you terminally online this week? Yeah, listen, after the last 20 minutes, I don't I don't know if I'm calling myself terminally anymore. I think my my use of or my my time online has changed very drastically over the last few years. So terminally online, but in a different way. But for the purposes of the show, I feel like maybe the past day or two when all the Barbie marketing has kind of um, coincided with this Oppenheimer marketing to become Barbenheimer. It is now in the New York Times, so I feel like that that probably brings me down to a zero. I have never heard of this term. What? Before I saw you put it in Slack today. Never. Oh my God. No. The Barbie, I've I've seen all the Barbie marketing and all the stories about the Barbie stuff. I didn't even, I didn't even hear, I didn't know about the Oppenheimer thing. Okay. So I, you don't know about the movie Oppenheimer? No. Yeah. Let's back up for a second. There's a Barbie movie coming out. And on the same day that Barbie comes out, a movie called Oppenheimer about the atomic bomb comes out. Yes. And these movies could not be more different. And they one are. Is thank you. Thank pink. you for. Thank you for explaining one. that. <laughs> visually, <laughs> the one is visually so very the movie, dark. The movie about Barbie is different than the movie about the atomic bomb, is what you're. Yeah, saying. it's much grimmer. It's okay. much more grim. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently, there are all these people who are prepping for the release day. I think it's like June 21st or no, that already happened. July 21st. Um, they're prepping for this release day and they're trying to do a double header and they're trying to decide like, which do I watch first? Which do I watch second? How do I do it? They're making t-shirts. They're like doing, they're very committed to being fans of both, which I found fascinating. I too did not know anything about Oppenheimer until, until I was online and was like, what are all these people talking about? But yeah, apparently it is called Barbenheimer. They're calling it or Boppenheimer. Your, your kind of pick here. Um, I have so many questions about this. What? Oh, someone tell me the Venn diagram of people who are so, so excited about the Barbie film that they are preparing for it a month away, but also so excited about a film about the atomic bomb that they are also preparing for it a month in advance. Can I help you here? Yeah. Yeah. So, one, the American theater experience is dying. And people are looking for reasons <laughs> to go to the theater. Marvel comic book movies, which had been driving theater going, are uh, sort of falling before our eyes. And so this, you have two movies from two of America's greatest directors, Greta Gerwig on Barbie yeah, and Christopher Nolan on Oppenheimer. Oh, it's a Christopher Nolan movie. Okay. Yeah. And Christopher Nolan movies are event movies. Uh, and does it, do I seem interested in either of these? No. But you can sort of see how this becomes a thing for people to do. If, who like really like movies and have been wanting non Marvel DC fare to come to the movies and it happens they come on the same day. Are these people, think, do these people have jobs? 
They work at Crooked. A lot of them work at Crooked. <laughs> yeah. All of them are employed by you, actually. Yeah. You might you might as well just make Friday a the Friday, July twenty first, some sort of day off or something, because I wouldn't do any pods that day. Look, I want to see both movies. I, I mean, I'm I don't know that I need to prepare right now. It's only. Only, it's only June 28th, but I do want to see both movies. <laughs> well, people are preparing their schedule. They're trying to decide which tickets do I buy first because I think there is there is one tweet that was like, um, you know, the people who are doing Barbie first are crazy. Like, it's got to be like you, you have your coffee, you have your cigarette, you see Oppenheimer first, then you go to brunch, like decompress a little bit, and then you do Barbie, and then you have like a fun evening. So people are really kind of thinking about how to approach – this double header. I also think now that it's feature, a- feature, double, double feature. I gotta say, double feature. Double fe- sorry, double feature. Yeah. There are shirts on Etsy. They're like half and half. It's yeah. There's a lot here. There's a lot. I, I there's some none, great I, online I presume memes none of these, about this. I presume none yes. of these people have uh, small children. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <know>. not, <laughs> because at the between the cost of a movie and the cost of a babysitter and the opportunity to spend. What would add up to almost six hours without your children? I'm not sure anyone with parent, with children would spend it. Before Charlie yeah. was born, I was asking, uh, I was talking to Ben Rhodes about having kids, and I was like, well, "So what changes?" And he goes, "Here's the here's the biggest thing that will change: you will never go to a movie again, <laughs> like for years." He goes, and "It's a very specific thing because should you get out of the house and find a babysitter at some point, and you have a whole bunch of options, you will select." Dinner with friends, parties. The last thing you will select is we will just go sit in a movie theater with this one night that we got off from parenting. And he was right. (laughs) I know. I've been in the movies one time since Kyla was born five years ago, and it was to see DC Super Pets with Kyla. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we went to see Cliff. Cliff, We saw Clifford the Big Red Dog with Charlie, and he left after uh, 20 minutes. I was going to say, I heard that was scary for kids. He just, he was over it. He wasn't scared. Wasn't he wasn't into like, it. Get me out of here. Because they yeah. can't, they don't sit still for longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, I thought I was bad. I'm like not usually a regular movie goer, but I did make it this year to see Megan. So I guess, uh, I guess I had something. Well, mm. uh, I don't think you're very online, Priyanka. I know. Uh, I, don't think I, so. I don't think so either. I'm very excited about the prospect of going to see this double feature just for the meme, just because it seems like such a, you know, unique experience. I, I just yeah. want to speak in defense of Priyanka here. I think she is a, a little bit online for this. I think, Elijah, you are too online <laughs> to make that judgment. Most yeah. people in this country, if you ask them what fucking Barbenheimer is, they, they would not know. Yes, no. Look, I, I would say, about I this. would I say was... 95% of people have no fucking idea what that is. John, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. But I know that this is like, this is kid stuff for you guys. <laughs> but I know that I'm terminally online in very different ways. Like I'm terminally online in that like I have very, I don't know, I'm on the real real every day at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. when they upload their new things and I have all my saved search, like, I don't know. I'm terminally (laughs) online for shopping and and not Twitter anymore, which I think is good for me, but it hasn't really solved the problem. I call that progress. This is a very important point that relates to possibly the core flaw in this show is being (laughs) really, really, really online about one thing does not mean that you are not online if you're unfamiliar about if you being online with a narrow set of interests is not better than being online with a wide set of interests. <laughs> that is true. Well, we're in agreement that the Holocaust denial Jews in Hollywood, that's a five. Though. <laughs> yes. If you watched a YouTube video of Roseanne Barr doing an interview with a MAGA comedian, that's a five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's a wow. five. Yeah, John, your point is uh, well taken. I was with friends the other day. A friend asked if I wanted to go see Oppenheimer with him, and I was like, I want to go see Barbenheimer. And he said, what are you fucking talking about? (laughs) So, yeah, Priyanka, we'll put you at a three. Maybe go to a doctor because, you know, you didn't know that story inside and out. Go ahead and wrap up with mine. Uh, It's different. It's about other people being terminally online. It's not about something I saw. It's a story that I've been... Wanted to tell for a while. John is a little bit more familiar with it. Uh, It's about how a week or two ago, I went to the North Carolina GOP convention uh, because they were having it here in my hometown and Donald Trump was speaking right after he'd been indicted. So I thought I'd go, you know, I just like the content. I just want to see what happens. Is that a ticketed event? Did you go as media? Like, I'm so curious. 
So I just rolled up, you know, I was just at a Sheraton here in Greensburg, oh North gosh. Carolina. Drove over, walked in. I said, hey, can I can I watch? And they said, yeah, there's an overflow room for unticketed, you know, on uh, credentialed people. So I went in there and I was just sitting there with a, a bunch of Republicans. There was a guy sitting in front of me with what I would describe as like a MAGA Hawaiian shirt. Uh the woman sitting next to me had a bunch of like Jesus X Trump gear on, you know, crossover. There were some guys in suits who were clearly party officials. And so I was just kind of watching it. And shortly after I got there, the convention had their election for the state party chair. And the incumbent got up there. He made his speech about how awesome he was and how much he'd accomplished. And then the challenger got up there. And it was clear that he was running to the right of the incumbent. And he was focused 100% on elections. This is where things start to get online. Uh, The line that stuck out to me in this challenger speech was, much like Bud Light has tainted their brand by endorsing extreme LGBTQ positions, the NCGOP's brand is tainted by their stance on elections. We don't even use paper ballots. So (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was quite quite the rhetorical flair there. And then they moved on to the voting for this position. And this is where things started to get off the rails is because they used an, an app to do their voting for this shadow chair app. position. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shadow app. Oh, God. Electronic ballots. And the app malfunctioned. Of course it did. Oh, God. And the room turned on itself like crazy. They were like fighting. You know, some woman, she interrupted and she said that she was appalled and she felt like she was in a third world leftist country. (laughs) People were demanding to nullify the votes. In the room I was in, people were trying to, you know, get on the app and like vote themselves to prove that it was like corrupt, that it didn't work. And this went on for hours and it was so tense. People were fighting around me. Uh, And in the end, you know, they, they said that the incumbent won. Uh, but the challenger refused to, uh, concede. And he said that this was a disgrace (laughs) and that it was, this is the new Maricopa County. (laughs) Which Which by itself is quite an online thing to say. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And the, they, they didn't get through everything they needed to get through. They needed to vote on a new party platform. They needed to vote on a vice chair. They just didn't do it because Trump was coming and this broken election app took all their time and, Everyone was disgusted. It was tense. And they all like stormed out of the convention hall to get dinner. And I was like, wow, this was quite something to see. And I guess what I was most struck by was how every uh, accusation was a conviction and how this party that had welcomed this kind of rhetoric into, you know, its its platform just ate itself in real time. It was wild to see. So I mean, that that is that is what I that is my terminally <laughs> online this week. Dom- Dominion strikes again. Is that that who made the app? I I don't know. <laughs> I did not say who made the app, but I don't think it was Dominion. Was it did did the ghost of Hugo Chavez come and uh did he that that screw up the app? Again, that's very online. That's very online. No, he did. Too. Look, it worked its way in. All the jokes that we have about it were right there in the room. <laughs> like playing out before your eyes. That's like terminally offline or online seeping into your offline life. That's so mm. wild. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Rare. I mean, he has to be he has to be a zero, right? <laughs> yeah. He, he just told us a, no, he told us a story no, about literally like, leaving the house. That's fair. <laughs> I get it. Like I, I understand the instinct to knock off a point for that. But like he's so aware of everything that's happened, I mean, in the real world and also online to, you know, see the patterns in what happened in his offline life. Like he's then thinking about online. So I don't know. Your brain never <laughs> left online. So like Yeah, I understood every very online reference they made. Like when they said new Maricopa County, I was like, oh, yeah, I get what you're talking yep. about. Yeah. Unfortunately, we all get that. <laughs> yeah. I. I just feel like however we score this, we should just recognize that we want a creative incentive structure for Elijah to leave the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, but th- this is what I never know about this game. Is a high score good? Like, I came in today wanting to get a five, and I fucking got it. Yeah, you got it. You, yeah. <laughs> you won. <laughs> Kudos, like, my been friend. A, there's been a couple weeks in the past I felt a little embarrassed that I wasn't as online as everyone. Everyone's like, of course, I saw that, whatever, you know? And so I was like, you know what? This I'm going to step this up. This is my week. Step up. 
I mean, the last time I did the show with you, you spent the first seven minutes talking about how little online you were and bragging about your screen time. Twitter, not on the phone. Twitter is not on the phone. Oh, mazel tov. Congratulations on, on your well-balanced <laughs> life. Uh, I, went, just, I, just did a, I just did an interview for offline, and then I came into this studio to do terminally online. So there's a lot, <laughs> lot going on in my life right now. Look, I, I, every day I just want to congratulate you for moving from an iPhone to an iPad. Okay, that's it's not on the <laughs> iPad. It's on the iPad. <laughs> I feel like I deserve some credit here that my love of content made me go over to this event. I mean, like I put on that's a little true. disguise. That's true. That's what inspired for... you. Yeah, no. The VSA team's applauding you. Yeah, but I put on <laughs> khakis and like a polo shirt for it, so I You're, blend in better. Look, you did, a, you did original reporting from Crooked Media, which does not happen often. You were you were you were a roving correspondent. My one note is the next time you go to a Republican event like that, you should check in at the media table and say Elijah Cohn, Crooked Media, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I bet." Man, I was trying to hide it. Like I was really trying to hide it. I was like, I just want to watch. Just a guy, just here to watch. Just a politics enjoyer. Just here to watch. I would yeah. love to be a fly on the wall, not just for your convention experience, but the experience of you like trying to get dressed and looking at your closet and being like, what will help me blend in the most with this crowd? I feel like that would be something I would enjoy. I feel like I have a window into this because, not to break down the fourth wall here, but we had a meeting that Elijah was in one hour ago, and he was wearing a different T-shirt. Mm. In that meeting, his t- he was wearing a Budweiser T-shirt. Yeah. For that one. Oh. But then he decided to dress up for this by putting on a circa 2017 Pod Save the World shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pre pre AirPods. These 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 oh, wow. AirPods yeah. have uh, wires. Yeah, in them. a shirt so old that has wired AirPods on it. You're lucky you didn't wear that woke Budweiser T-shirt to the uh, North Carolina event. I mean, what a world where just like six months ago you would have chosen the Budweiser T-shirt yeah. as a yes. proof that you were a re- red-blooded American. No Target, no Budweiser. No Chick-fil-A? No Chick-fil-A. I no mean, we're like no six months Chick-fil-A. away from not being able to wear your Donald Trump shirt to one of these things. <laughs> uh, or, or, you know, Ron DeSantis because he got married at Disney, you know. That's right. <laughs> See? Fair enough. Fair enough. Look, uh, the real reason I took off the shirt was because I have a meeting with our CEO and CFO that just got put on right after this. And they're not going to like the Budweiser shirt. I don't want to have to explain that one. So I think Lucinda uh, would absolutely love that shirt. Yeah, maybe. We'll, we'll never know. We'll, we'll never, never know. know. Uh, so what's what my writing? Where did we land? Zero or I don't get any credit here? Yeah, you get credit. Uh, I'm going to give you a two. Yeah, that's okay. fair. I get uh, that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm yeah, a two. Deal like, with it at home. Oh, God, but at heart, that. you're you're like a five. Just as yeah, a you're person. Always, yeah, just, you're the, you should you're, know that. You're still the most terminally online person at Christmas. Yes. Media. Yes. Oh. I don't want you to feel <laughs> sad that, that you got a two this week. Thanks, in the guys. in the best possible way, in the best possible way, it's a compliment. I feel I feel so fulfilled. Um, so <laughs> I'm a two. I'll just deal with it at home. Uh, Dan and Priyanka are threes. They just should go to a doctor, but it's not that serious. And then John, congratulations. The host of offline is terminally <laughs> online. That don't was tell, bleak. Don't, don't tell Max. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. He's so offline. He'll he never will know. know about yeah. This. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up the show here with uh, an installment of the advice column, the best name segment at Crooked Media. Oh, right. I forgot about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't Dan even know knows. This. How fun. Dan knows when I name segments because it's political experts react or advice column. No fun <laughs> things here. No. It's, it's, t- it's time to the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> yeah. Stay Once. That's their name on Discord. Subscriber named Stay Once wants to know, I'm a licensed attorney in Utah. And I'm eyeing politics uh, as a future. Given that I'm a liberal leaning moderate in a state where I appear to be far left, would it be wiser to enter a traditional electoral race or apply for an upcoming judicial opening? And if you guys don't have an answer to that, just what office would you all run for and where? I'd maybe apply for that judicial opening. <laughs> no, I yeah. think unless he wants to, unless they want to run in Salt Lake City. It really depends what city you live in. Yeah, like you want to run for, you want to be mayor of Salt Lake City? Maybe. I wouldn't be running for anything statewide in Utah unless the last name unless the last name is Romney. I'd have to know more about the judicial hiring process in yeah, Utah that's all to said, know. Yeah. Is that a government appointment? Is it is it a magistrate is judge sort of thing with a civil service? Who knows? But I agree with John that if you if you are living in a blue area, start local, right? Run for your school board, run for city council. There are there are blue areas. I mean, up until quite recently, Utah had a Democratic congressman. 
that could happen again. Mm, that's right. Yeah, Utah's weird. It's always a little bit more moderate. So what offices will we run for and where? Well, Dan, Dan is now <laughs> waiting out Chris Coons to retire in Delaware because uh, we got people running for Carper's seat, uh, Lisa Blunt Rochester. Uh, we got um, now someone running for her seat, uh, whose name is Sarah, Sarah McBride. Sarah McBride, yep. Sarah McBride. So now Dan's just got to wait. There's only one more statewide uh, Delawarean left there, and that's Chris Coons. So that's. Matt, I would say Lisa Blunt Rochester and Sarah McBride are highly qualified, highly appealing, actual residents of Delaware, which yeah, makes sense. <laughs> you guys have joked about this Dan running in Delaware so much that I think you're serious. Like I, I'm. I was wondering. I was like, oh, are we? Is that happening? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. I like to. I like to keep stringing the audience along. Maybe they'll. Who knows? You know. And that's also. It's a little bit of psychological torture for my mom, who would like me to move home. <laughs> Dan has he's, never said no. He's not he's closing said- the door on it. I didn't. There's yeah. not a Sherman esque no. Yeah, yeah. No one. I would. I would never close the door on a potential opportunity. There you go. There you go. Oh. I don't think I'd want to run for Congress. I think I'd want to. Like, if there was one office to run for, it would be, like, governor. Oh, yeah. interesting. I'd Why rather Or, or state. Maybe I'd, maybe I'd start with... I just think you can, like... You can get more... If you're a governor, you can get, like, get a lot of shit done. If you're a fucking... If you're one senator or one member of Congress, you... I mean, if you want to... If I was younger, maybe, right? Like, if you were going to live your whole life in Congress and just kind of go up through the ranks, yeah, that's one thing. But I don't know. I think it would be more fun to be a, a governor somewhere. I mean, like, you're a natural doer, like, an executive, if you will. <laughs> like, not a legislator. <laughs> not a legislator. I, see, I see it, yeah. I don't, think I'd yeah. Be, I don't think I'd be good at that. But I don't Any know state? where. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's I, California's Hawaii. kind of a big one. Yeah. Hawaii. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah. Thing is, no, you need a state. Well, you don't. I do. Uh, need a state with a, a capital that would be uh, a good place to live, right? Because some state capitals are the biggest city, and that's great. But like, yeah, you know, it's like poor, Gavin Newsom's living in Sacramento. How cool? How fun is Sacramento? Hey, it's actually you know, we sell it's, Sac- in Sacramento. Sacramento, <laughs> yeah, Sacramento, Sacramento is Sacramento is really good. There's a think. lot of people. Yeah. I'm being very honest here. I'm, 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 here def- I'm here to defend Sacramento. Yeah, light the beam. Uh, yeah. You know what? I had one work trip to Sacramento that was just in the middle of the summer where I got a bad vibe. But I should go back with people who know Sacramento. And I bet I would have a great time. Yeah, there are great there are great bars, breweries. The Kings are fun. Yeah, no, I just had a I just had a one bad experience there. I feel like you've opened up a content door to Sacramento now, and this won't be yeah. the last we've we've heard of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm open. I'm open to Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> John, John John Favreau leaves the door open for a run for governor. Hate Sacramento <laughs> <laughs> by by shitting on Sacramento yeah. and and uh, saying that he would never run for Congress because he's not a good legislator. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, Priyanka, man. where would you run? What would you run for? Where would you run? I don't know. I honestly feel like I might rather like work for like I don't know if you were like governor. Mm -hmm. I would be like, oh, cool. I'll come work in your office. Like, I don't know if I feel like I want to be like the one doing, making the big decisions. But I feel like let me just say you're hired. I like being on a team. I think it's fun. I think I have good vibes. I think that is like something I actually really would enjoy. That's probably what I would do. I don't know. Priyanka's going to manage one of our campaigns. Elijah, are you? uh, Why can't she be lieutenant governor? Oh, Oh, well, that's. that's, that's, I mean, that's still that's still being out front and running. You know. You run us a ticket. It'd be great. Oh, great. I mean, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> sure. Elijah, are you running in North Carolina? I learn a little Carolina? more about what that does, but yeah. I think, yeah, you know, start local, North Carolina, love Greensboro, love love my city and my state. Uh, but if I was going to be involved in politics outside of media, it'd definitely be like ambassadorship to like, you know, oh. <laughs> France or somewhere cool. <laughs> Yeah, that, well. those are the best positions appointed positions that's the one you want to go for those people they are the ones who really got it figured out and then you just got to hope you're not like Gordon Sondland and get called to testify for some weird thing <laughs> so. I mean a Gordon Sondland reference in 2023 <laughs> speaking of terminally online yeah. <laughs> or yeah. or knowledgeable about his industry <laughs> <laughs> that was off the top of the dome too I will that, say that yeah. is, I, yeah. I hadn't thought about that name since he testified 
I mean, look, we've well, had what I'm, five? I'm, we've had five impeachments in U.S. history, and he remembers one of them. Kudos, yeah. Elijah. That's yeah. just doing your job. <laughs> Me neither, but it's clearly buried in there somewhere. And yeah. uh, that'll go ahead and wrap up terminally online this week. Thank you all so much for your questions. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.